everyone. What a pleasant day. And here's the news. Many countries congratulate China on its success in three space missions. The Global Space Agency extols China's Shenzhou 12 mission, which successfully sent three astronauts to space. The three astronauts have made it to China's core module Tianhe, starting a three-month mission that involves the completion and operation of Chinese space station Tiangong. The United States National Aeronautics and Space Administration and Administrator Bill Nelson congratulate China on the successful launch of crew to the space station on the website of NASA. Russia's state space corporation Roscosmos sends sincere congratulations to China on the successful launch of three technodes to the space station. Russia will work with China in developing the new International Lunar Research Station. Russia and China will become lasting and reliable partners in the long-term exploration of near-Earth and outer space. Meanwhile, the European Space Agency tweets to congratulate China on its achievement of launching three technodes on the Shenzhou 12 mission to the Tianhe space station. Indonesia warns after shocks after magnitude 6.1 earthquake near Malukas Islands. Sejarah gempa dan tsunami. Indonesia's Meteorology and Geophysics Agency warns of possible aftershocks and tsunami potential after a 6.1 magnitude earthquake hit near the Malukas Islands. BMKG says the quake which struck at depth of 10 kilometers, no tsunami potential. But later a tsunami wave could potentially be triggered by underwater landslides. Official says there are no immediate reports of casualties so far, but some buildings and public facilities sustained damage. Officials add 16 aftershocks were recorded following the main quake and the agency was still monitoring the situation. A Central Maluku Regency Disaster Agency official says hundreds of local residents run up nearby hills due to fear of tsunami waves, but many have returned home since. Thailand will reopen tourist attractions in July to restore economy. Prime Minister Prayu Chang Ocha says Thailand will reopen to visitors in early July after more than a year of coronavirus travel carbs to revive its troubled economy. In a nationally televised speech, Prayut says the country is ahead of target in securing 105.5 million doses of coronavirus vaccine for this year and will see more supplies next year. Prayut adds that the country plans to administer an average of 10 million shots of coronavirus vaccine each month from July and aims to reopen the tourism-reliant country to fully vaccinated travelers, local and foreign, without a quarantine requirement. It will start the pilot reopening from July 1st on its most popular island, Phuket, which has been vaccinating most of its local population. Prayut urges the public to get vaccinated that way can normalize activities in the country. Cambodian authorities urge the resident of the floating wooden boat house in Phnom Penh to leave the place. Cambodian authorities orders float wooden houseboats from the Phnom Penh community to scrap and leave the place as soon as possible, even though they start demolishing the house, but the old residents don't know where they should go because they have nowhere else to go. I don't know where to go, I have no land, and I can't build any house on the river bank either. The villagers don't allow me to do so because they own that land. The Phnom Penh municipality says the communities amount to floating slums that are eyesores and health hazards with trash bags and raw sewage floating alongside the houseboats. Authority says starting this week, this floating house must go even though for generations, iconic houseboats adorn the Tonle Samp River, sustain thousands of residents who depend on the river's bounty and farm for a living. They also urge the government to delay about five to six months for them so that they could continue life. 
They also says the crackdown came too soon and question why they needed to move with the game still more than a year away. Malaysia accelerates the vaccination campaign after a case of infection in the country. Malaysia is accelerate its vaccination campaign by procuring more supplies and increasing the number of inoculation centers as the country faces a serious surge of COVID-19 infections. Total country cases 640,000 with the number of new daily infections rising above 6,000 in recent days. Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin announces in June that Malaysia will procure 60 million vaccine doses in the next two months and open more than 300 additional vaccination sites. The Kuala Lumpur Convention Centre, open as a vaccination site June, can inoculate around 8,000 people per day. Over 422 million vaccine doses are administered across the country. The Malaysian government is now hoping to reach the target of vaccinating at least 80% of the population or later than the end of 2021. Aung San Suu Kyi on trial in cases for being a witness possession in illegal walkie-talkie radio. <laughs> Aung San Suu Kyi lawyer says Myanmar's ousted leader Suu Kyi went on trial as the first witnesses took the stand in case against her of illegally possessing walkie-talkie radios and breaking coronavirus protocols. Suu Kyi faces a slew of charges since being overthrown by the army in the February 1st coup. King Maung Zhao in a statement says, after the day of hearings, Suu Kyi seemed not very well, but throughout the hearing, she seemed quite interested and paid keen attention. Suu Kyi's supporters says the charges are politically motivated and designed to end the political life of a woman who championed democracy for decades. The Nobel Peace Prize laureate faced three cases at the specially built court in the capital Napitiao. Two cases are linked to the possession of the radios and one under the Natural Disaster Management Law for breaching coronavirus regulations while campaigning for the election she won last November. She also faces charges of incitement with hearing set and more serious charges of violating the Official Secrets Act and under the anti-corruption law. And former President Win Mint also faces charges of violating the coronavirus measures. Police Major Mint Naing take the stand against him and Suu Kyi. Police Major Ki Lin testifies in the cases over the radios. South Korean Spain agreed to strengthen tourism area for the recovery of tourism level after being hit by the pandemic. Spain's Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Reyes Maroto, and South Korean President Moon Jae-in opened the Spain and South Korean Tourism Conference in Barcelona to promote travel between the two countries. Both Moon and Maroto says they hope to return tourism levels between the countries to pre-pandemic times. Moon, who was received with military honors by Spain's royals on a state visit, the first state visit to take place in Spain since the start of the pandemic and take place within the framework of the 70th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the two countries, which was celebrated in 2020. A Spanish government press release says during the bilateral meeting, Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez and Moon addresses the deep and extensive bilateral relations, especially in the economic, commercial and investment fields, and both countries agreed to expand their collaboration on renewable energy, infrastructure and sustainable food issues. Wuhan Chinese research team should win a Nobel Prize in Medicine for their research on COVID-19 not to blame. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman says the team in Wuhan should win the Nobel Prize in Medicine for their research on COVID-19 rather than being criticized. Until recently, some of the United States side have continued to hype up the so-called lab leak in Wuhan.
In addition, Shi Zhengli, a researcher at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, Chinese Academy of Sciences, again refuted such false accusations in an interview with the New York Times. Meanwhile, in March, the WHO released the origin tracing study report of the China and WHO joint mission drawing a clear conclusion that lab leak is extremely unlikely. Zhao notes if the United States is truly transparent and responsible, it will be as open as China and immediately invite international experts to Fort Detrick and other places in the United States to conduct a detailed investigation. Dr. Julia, who gained her PhD in immunology at the Pasteur Institute in France, says the gene sequence of COVID-19 was first identified by Chinese scientists, but that does not mean Wuhan is the source of the coronavirus, nor can it be interfered that the coronavirus was made by Chinese scientists. The United Nations orders all nations to stop all flow arms to Myanmar and argues military to respect elections results. The United Nations General Assembly calls on nation for a stop to the flow of arms to Myanmar and urges the military to respect November election results and release political detainees including leader Aung San Suu Kyi. The General Assembly adopted a resolution with the support of 119 countries some four months after the military overthrew Aung San Suu Kyi's elected government in a coup. The military cited the government's refusal to address what it says was fraud in a November election as a reason for the coup. An initial draft United Nations resolution includes stronger language calling for an arms embargo on Myanmar. According to a proposal seen by Reuters, nine Southeast Asian countries wanted that language removed. L85 revision one is adopted. General Assembly resolutions are not legally binding but carry political weight. Unlike the 15-member Security Council, no country has veto power in the General Assembly. According to the Assistance Association for Political Prisoners, the Junta's force have killed more than 860 people since the February 1st coup. Meanwhile, the Junta says the number is much lower. The United Nations resolution calls on the Myanmar military to immediately stop all violence against peaceful protesters and end restrictions on the internet and social media. President of China sends congratulatory message to United Nations Secretary General on his re-election. Chinese President Xi Jinping sends a congratulatory message to the United Nations Chief and Portuguese President Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa over Guterres' re-election. In his messages, she says that as the most universal representative and authoritative intergovernmental international organization, China expects Guterres to continue to fulfill his obligations laid out in the UN Charter, uphold an objective and just position, firmly preserve multilateralism and make greater contributions to world peace and common development. Solemnly swear to exercise in all loyalty. The United Nations General Assembly appointed Secretary-General Antonio Guterres for a second five-year term. Taking the oath of office in the General Assembly Hall, Guterres says he was aware of great responsibilities bestowed on him at this decisive moment in history. Guterres pledges to continue helping the world chart a curse out of the pandemic. Well, that's all. Stay safe, stay healthy and have a nice day.